Good afternoon and welcome to this online interactive press conference. Drive Me is an exciting project and a pilot project which has the ambition of getting 100 vehicles, self-drive vehicles, on the road here in Gothenburg, Sweden, with real customers behind the wheel. It's a program that was a, gives us a unique solution and that enables us to integrate self-driving cars into real traffic. And today we're going to unveil the technology that is put into our cars that enables this to be possible. The technology will be explained by Dr. Peter Mertens, who is our SVP for Research and Development at Volvo Cars, along with the technical expert, Dr. Eric Kulig. You'll then have the opportunity to ask questions after this technological explanation, so please don't hesitate to use the field on your screen and send us your questions, and we'll get, in, get into as many of those as we can in the time. But that's enough from me, enough of the introduction. Let's get into that technological explanation and hand you over to P Dr. Peter Mertens, our Head of Research and Development. Peter. Thanks, Jonathan. Autonomously driving cars are really a fundamental change towards traffic and us as an industry. Customers in future will decide whether they want to actively drive or have the car and the systems take over and use times different, especially in boring situations when you're commuting from home to your office and stuck in traffic jams and heavy traffic. So Drive Me as a project is really the world's first last scale uh, pilot on autonomously driving vehicles, which we're going to conduct with 100 cars, 100 real customers in real traffic in and around Gothenburg in 2017. And it's not only about the technology we develop, it's really also about the bigger picture, including the societal approaches and how customers react in the cars when they are driven autonomously or customers that approach cars which apparently don't, uh, by, are not driven by the drivers but by the car itself. So what's the big news about autonomous driving cars and Volvo cars? It's actually us being different to our competitors in setting up a complete system. It's a holistic view and approach we are taking. And we do this in real traffic with real customers and real cars. It's relatively easy to put together a mock-up or a a uh, show car which drives around uh, race circuits with 250 kilometers or put living rooms on four wheels and pretend that this is the car interior, how it looks like in 10 years. It is much more complicated and much more real life to really put the cars into the traffic where it's the most complicated situation. To make autonomously driven cars as safe as if they were driven by good drivers and experienced drivers, it takes a lot of technology, sensors and redundancy in systems where current cars, today's vehicles, aren't even prepared for that. And the guy that can explain that the best is Eric Curling, and with that I hand it over to you, Eric. Thank you, Peter. Making a car drive itself means that a car needs to be able to see, to decide and act on itself. Also when the situation is exceptional. As Peter already indicated, the key to success is combining sensors, computers and the chassis system in a clever way, whereby each component gets a well-defined and feasible task. The robustness and ability to deal with this exceptional situation cannot be created by one single magical component. It has to be created by the combination of them all. It's teamwork, if you want. When we started the design of the overall system, we of course took the technology from the all-new Volvo XC90 as a base. Being one of the safest cars of the road, it comes equipped with the world's most advanced standard active safety package. Let's have a look at some of the new technologies that we will introduce when making cars drive themselves. Well, first of all, we have a vehicle positioning system. The self-driving car needs to know exactly where it is, much more accurately than a standard GPS system. So instead, we created a high-definition 3D map of the cars that we're driving on. This map contains information about the position of lane markers, guardrails, uh, signposts, and we can combine these positions with the positions that we measure with our cameras and radars. And by aligning measurement with the map, we can determine exactly where the car is. So based on that, we have a very good picture of the stationary environment around the car. 
But of course, we also need information about other road users, the position and the speed of other cars. For this task, we use different sensors. One unique one that I would like to highlight is the trifocal camera. It's a unique camera system behind the windscreen of the car that's looking in front. And it combines different horizontal field of views for different purposes. There's a very broad field of view that we use to detect cars that may be cutting in or a pedestrian that may be coming in from the side. There's a medium field of view looking straight ahead towards the cars in front of us or the lane markers that we want to read. But there's also a very narrow field of view with a very long range that we use to detect debris on the road. This debris, there may be tires or exhaust pipes, but we have to detect it because we do not want to drive into this. Another new sensor is the forward-looking multi-beam laser scanner. It's also a very wide field of view. And we use this laser scanner to detect cars or debris on the road. But the key is that we use radar, camera and laser technologies. Three different sensing principles that give us a very robust detection of whatever happens in front of the car. Besides looking to the front, we also have to look around us. We need surround radar and surround vision. The car comes equipped with four radars in the corner of the car. These four medium range radars can measure the distance to cars in adjacent lanes or maybe a little bit behind us, the distance to guardrails, and they give us a picture of what's happening around us. But also the cameras, the surround looking cameras, four of them, they detect cars at the side, but also lane markers at the side of the car. And it's important to remember that it's, you need to have multiple cameras. One single camera can be blinded by sunlight. Sunlight may be directly shining into the lens, blinding the system, but then we have cameras at other locations that still can continue with that. Finally, we have a cloud service. The car is connected through a communication link to the cloud, and we use that to get the latest map data to the car, but also the latest traffic information. And besides that, People at the traffic control center will have the possibility to switch off the functionality if extreme conditions would occur off the road. It may be a snowstorm or something similar. We apply the same fail operational principles to the design of the computer system. The system that decides upon the actions and the motion of the vehicle. You could call this the brain of the car. It is at least two independent computer systems. And that means that if one of the two would fail for whatever reason, the other computer system will still have sufficient information to bring the vehicle to a safe stop. And in order to make this possible, we of course designed a brake system and a steering system with backup solutions and connected them in a very clever way to the brain of the car and to its sensors. And doing this, this in a clever way means that ordinary customers can sit behind the steering wheel of a self-driving car in a very safe way. Peter. Thanks, Eric. Autonomous drive is really one of those real paradigm change in automotive industry and we need to make sure with DriveMe as a project that we develop a holistic approach on vehicles, infrastructure and societal aspects in a way that cars in future behave like good drivers and can really prevent accidents from happening and support our strategy that in 2020 nobody should be seriously injured or killed in a new Volvo. And with that, back to you, Jonathan. Peter, Eric, thank you very much. We've now been uh, joined by Marcus Rotoff, who is the director of the DriveMe project. Marcus, welcome. Thank you. I think we're going to get straight into the questions that are coming flooding in. Um, first one, which seems a very logical question to me. Eric, what is unique about the technology Volvo are using? Almost all car manufacturers have presented some kind of self-driving car. What's so special with your solution? Well. Our ambition is unique. Our ambition to have a creative, uh, an attractive offer to real customers in real cars on the real road. And by being so concrete, we have to address all aspects of self-driving car. The legislative aspects, we're working with traffic authorities, uh, with city planners. And by being so concrete, we have to have a technological solution that is feasible, affordable, and producible within the relatively short time frame that we have. And I think that's really unique within the automotive industry. Great stuff. Peter, one for you, I think. Do you think that all cars will connect to each other in the near future? If so, will this connection only be available between Volvo cars or between all brand of cars? 
No, it's a very good question. The connection has to be between all the cars. And by the way, there's, there's first effort being taken on standardizing that protocol so that cars of different brands can talk to each other. It's one of these really important things to make sure that we use that technology, not only for us, but with all the other competitors. Great. Marcus, one for you. Do the customers really want this? And, and who is the typical customer of the uh, automated driving car? Yeah, I think uh, it's all of us that sometimes has felt that we are wasting time in, in slow moving traffic, feeling frustration and time slipping mm. away. And I also think that, for example, distraction could be an example of uh, that there is so many people that really want the technology now, here and now. Good. We, we've had a question from Germany. Uh, I follow the, the issue with great excitement. How do the sensors currently work in rain, snow or in darkness? Eric. Well, normally sensors are very robust for darkness or rain and snow, but there is, of course, a limit. If there's a really severe snowstorm or the roads are completely mm. covered with snow, you cannot detect the lane markers. So we will make the system very robust, but we realize that in some weather conditions or environmental conditions, we will have to switch off the automatic driving function. It's, very, it's not easy to indicate where the limit is, but sensors are able and capable of detecting themselves that they cannot detect. So if we're aware of that, we will switch off in a safe way. And is that what part of the, the, the 100 car experiment is all about, to determine what the limits of the system are? Yeah, definitely. But at the same time, we are very experienced in working with this technology. I mean, the new XC90 is full with cameras and we've been working with radars, etc. So we know w what the systems are capable of. But by putting it into the, the real world, we will find limitations that there are in reality. And based on that, we will learn and we will adapt. Well, there's, there's one limitation that someone's asking about here. Let's get straight out with it. What will you do when one of your self-driving vehicles gets involved in an accident? How will you address failure in the aftermatch uh, of such an event? Well, first of all, we will do everything to minimize the risk of a collision. And before we will launch these 100 cars, we'll make sure that the legal regulations are very, very clear, both to ourselves as, to, as, as well to us, to our customers. If, despite anything, a collision occurs, the cars will have data recorders and they will collect the data upon what's happening. The cause of the accident may be that the driver made a mistake, that there's a technical failure, or if there's not a road user causing an accident. But based on the data, we can determine the cause and we can deal with it according to the regulations. Mm -hmm. Technically, we, we can achieve all of this. How do we think that society is actually going to accept self-driving cars? Marcus? Yeah, I think that's... It's maybe one of the main questions we have, how to get society to accept and trust self-driving cars. And it's one of the really important parts of making the Drive Me project to understand how we can make an accepted, trusted solution within society and with real humans and people behind the wheel. So I think that's one of the core parts of why we do the Drive Me project. Good. I think if I just may add one of the big uh, acceptance reasons and, and reasons we are in Drive Me project and in autonomous drive is that we think safety is a main aspect of that and it's not so much about having people sitting in a car and spending their time with other stuff. That will come obviously longer term but right now we as Volvo Cars really use that technology to enhance our safety systems. Which is interesting because the next question that comes up is why do you do this? Why is autonomous drive such an important area for Volvo Cars? It's the only way uh, we're going to get to our vision on 2020. Nobody should be seriously injured or even killed in a new Volvo. We need systems that really work together in infrastructure, in traffic, in all the situations to prevent accidents from happening, which is the core thing of autonomously driving vehicles. And that is you know, the way to get to our vision in 2020. We're doing very well. We, the new XC90 is a big, big step, step forward mm -hmm. uh, towards that target and is already having a lot of those systems which enable autonomously driving vehicles. And um, yeah, it is uh, the vision 2020 to, to be supported by that technology. As someone who knows us, I think, reasonably well, talking to Robin Page, your interior designer recently, we discussed how the interior might be very different when you need to drive, to work, to play in the car. What will, be the interior, what will the interior be like in the autonomous car at Volvo? Well, I think in the first generation, the first 100 cars, the interior will be relatively similar as we know it today. Um, 
you have your comfortable, comfortable seats, you have a great HMI system with all the infotainment that you, that you want to have. But uh, to start with, cars will have this dual functionality. Mm -hmm. They will be enjoyable to drive, but on certain roads, you will be able to activate the system and do something else behind the steering wheel. But we will not change the interior from day one. But if this technology will become successful, available to more customers, of course, in the, the long run, the, the interior will change accordingly. Mm -hmm. And what cars are we actually going to be using for these? The, these 100 cars are going to be what? Yeah, it will be XC90 cars. So the brand new car yeah, will be the one that's the brand doing new that. Car. Is the technological, technical solution that we've got in there sufficiently safe? This is something that's coming again and again from, from, from the people watching. Sure, I mean that is absolutely key and that is a prerequisite of us launching this technology. We as Volvo obviously are very much dedicated towards safety and those systems will be safe enough so that they can really do the job and we will have redundancy put into the systems to really make sure if systems fail there's a second